Uh, what we're going to do right now is we're going to explore a two-period consumption model where the rate at which you can borrow money outweighs the rate at which you can save. So for example, if the uh, rate of return on a savings account was 2%, we'd say the rate on a loan that you could, let's say, borrow against your future income may be like 4 or 5%. Uh, so we're just going to represent that as R sub B is greater than R sub S, or the rate at which you can borrow is greater than the rate at which you can save. So let's start off with just doing the very basic budget constraint, where your present value of consumption must equal your present value of income. So let's do, start with that. We know that the present value of consumption, which would be C sub 1, your consumption in period 1, plus the discounted value of C2, your consumption in period 2, must equal your income in period 1, plus the discounted value of your income in period 2. So that's what we know. But now we're not just going to use a basic interest rate. We're not going to just have the same interest rate for borrowing and for savings. So I'm going to use a different color. And let's use blue would be, well, you're saving. And we are going to graph out what the budget constraint would look like for this R. And uh, this is the easy part, so we're just going to substitute in RS. So C1 plus C2 over 1 plus RS equals Y1 plus Y2 over 1 plus RS. And basically, let's graph this budget constraint. The best way to graph a budget constraint is to just first find your maximum values. Uh, what I mean by that is, let's assume that we did complete consumption in period two, figure out what that maximum value would be, and then find the complete consumption in period one and see what that maximum value would be. Uh, the best way to do this is to just set consumption in period one equal to zero if you want to find this maximum value right here for consumption in period two. So let's quickly do that. If we set C1 equal to zero, you see we're gonna get C2 over one plus RS equaling to Y1 plus Y2 over one plus RS. So you can see how that comes about. Now, let's just solve for C2. And all we have to do is multiply both sides by one plus RS. That will cancel with the one plus RS multiply everything over here by 1 plus rs, those will cancel, we'll be left with 1 times the y1. So this point right here is going to be y1 is 1 plus rs plus y2. So that was pretty easy to find. And actually finding the point on the x-axis for your consumption period 1 is even easier. Because if we go back to our original budget constraint for rs, plug in 0 for C2, that just completely gets rid of this term right here. Therefore, we can see that C1 at this point is going to be equal to Y1 plus Y2 over 1 plus Rs. And then since this is a linear graph, we just have to connect those two points and find our budget constraint. So we have just easily found the budget constraint for RS. Now, this work is going to be exactly the same for RB, but what do we know? We know that RB is going to be greater than RS. So what does that mean for the maximum values for consumption in period one and the maximum values for consumption in period two, saying that this agent actually faces that RB versus that RS. So as you can see, I've written up here, we're going to assume that RB is greater than RS. So therefore, Y1 times 1 plus RB plus Y2 must lie on a higher point on the Y axis. Reason being is when you have 1 plus RB, that'll just be higher. So it'll just be a larger number. So we have this point right here being Y1, 1 plus RB, plus y2. Uh, so let's look at the other one now though. If they had to borrow with this higher rate, they should be able to consume less than if they were able to borrow at a lower rate. And the math works out too. As you can see here, if we were to change this to rb, 
it would make the denominator bigger, making this whole number smaller. So we'll see, it should be about the same length away, that this point right here would just be y1 plus y2 over 1 plus rb. And then just like before, we're just going to connect them to get our budget constraint. The cool thing about this finished product right here, showing the two different interest rates that this agent may face, is that if my drawing is correct, which, eh, it's all right, the point at which they cross right here should be the point at which they consume y2, y1. And what does that mean? That means at that point, they would consume in period one all their income, and in period two, they would consume all their income. That's all that really says. Now let's try to figure out, okay, well, obviously only the person who saves is going to be able to take advantage of RS. And only the person who borrows is going to be able to take advantage of RB. So therefore, we're gonna stick with our color scheme of blue being for our individual who saves. And it should make sense that the person who saves, the maximum that they are going to consume in period one is their entire income. That would mean if they didn't save anything. So let's talk about that. Instead of being able to consume any of these values right here, which would be more than your income in period one, their budget constraint starts to look like this. Because what that's saying is that in period one, I can consume any value below my income. In period two, since I have saved, I am able to now consume more than my income that I get in period two, so anything up here. Uh, I'm just going to keep this in here so we can show what was lost. So let's do the same thing for someone who borrows using the red marker. Now, for the person who borrows, obviously they're not going to be able to consume more than their period two income in period two because they're borrowing against their future income. So that means they're not going to be able to consume any of this. And like I said, let's keep that in there. But we will be able to consume something that looks just like that. Now figure out the budget constraint for an individual who ends up facing RS when they save and RB when they borrow. And figure out, you know, if that person's making their decision, uh, what that budget constraint would actually look like. And what we would do is we would just figure out, oh, well, the maximum this. So it'd be here, and then here. Meaning this whole area. So there you have it. That would be the budget constraint and the possible consumption bundles for an individual who faces a different borrowing and savings interest rate.